Hi everyone, tonight's video is going to be about angle relationships. So we're going to look at angles and some different scenarios that we might find and how those angles go together and the relationship to one another and the different words that we use to describe them. So first scenario that we're going to talk about are adjacent angles. And adjacent, another word for that is basically next to. So when you think about adjacent angles, you're thinking about two angles that are next to each other. So they have a common vertex and a common side. In this case here, uh, I'm going to call this angle ABC and this angle CBD. So angles ABC and CBD are adjacent. So this is an example of adjacent angles. Over here, if I call this angle XYZ and this angle PQR, these are not adjacent, right? They are kind of like located next to each other, but they don't share a common vertex and a common side, right? The vertex of this angle is Y, the vertex of this angle is Q, so there's no common vertex there. And they're obviously they don't share a side because they're separated. Now down here, these two look like they are ver um, adjacent angles. But listen carefully to the two angles that I'm going to be comparing. So we'll call this angle LMN. And then I'll be looking at angle LMP. Now. LMN is the first one I'm looking at, and then LMP is the second one I'm looking at. Those two aren't really next to each other, right? Even though they could share the common side, LM, and they share the vertex, M, if I'm thinking about this big angle, LMP, and then I think about LMN, LMN is actually kind of like inside LMP. So I wouldn't consider that an adjacent angle. So if, I'd have to be very careful about how I'm reading the question. If it asks me if LMN and LMP are adjacent, I would say no. But if it asks me a scenario where it's like ABC and CBD, where the common vertex is B and then the common side is C, and these two angles are next to each other, so I'm looking at this angle here first, and then this angle here second, those would be adjacent. Okay, so just be careful about the different scenarios you might see and what exactly is adjacent and what's not adjacent. So this one, yes, these two, no. The next relationship we're going to talk about are vertical angles. So vertical angles, again, they have a common vertex. Let's call that X. We'll call this again, uh, we'll call this YXZ. And we'll call this RXS. These two are formed by intersecting lines. So I have YX and Z over here, RX and S. They have a common vertex. They're formed by two intersecting lines. They basically make an X. And so YXZ is vertical to, or you could say vertical width, RXS. So those two are vertical angles. The nice thing about this is the other two angles in this picture are also vertical angles. So YXR and ZXS are also vertical angles. And another neat fact about vertical angles is that they're always congruent. So angle RXS is congruent with YXZ. And so I put the one little arc on those. And then remember, I said these other two angles in the picture are also congruent. So that means YXR and ZXS are also congruent. They're congruent to each other, but not to these other two. So that's why they get two arcs to distinguish that those two are congruent as opposed to the one arc on the other one. Okay, so that's what vertical angles look like. Here I have a diagram that kind of looks like an X, but these are all just four rays that are extending from the same endpoint. These aren't intersecting lines, right? Because if I look clearly here, this line does not, or this ray 
does not line up with this ray. So that's not a case of vertical angles. So even though I can see there's angles like across from each other, they're not quite um, made up by intersecting lines. So that this is a scenario where it's not. So you can think of adjacent angles as next to, vertical angles as across, but the special thing with vertical angles is that they have to be intersecting lines. So this has to be opposite rays that go across there. The last thing is a linear pair. We'll talk about this. It's an adjacent angle or a set of adjacent angles and they have opposite rays at a common vertex. So here again is an example of a yes scenario and a no scenario. With the linear pair we see that the common uh, the common vertex is the start of two opposite rays. So that makes up a line. So the bottom is a line. So just like these uh, intersecting lines form a vertical angle, you need a straight line to make a linear pair. So these two angles here, we'll just use the numbers to identify these. So we'll call this angle one, this angle two, we'll call this angle three, and this angle four. Angle one and two make up a linear pair because they are adjacent angles. They're next to each other. They share a side and a vertex and they have opposite rays at the vertex. Clearly that's a straight line. Three and four are not a linear pair because even though they're adjacent, they have a common side and common vertex. At that common vertex, I don't have opposite rays. Right? This doesn't make a line. This ray is going up in this direction. This ray is going up in this direction. It's not a straight line across like that is. Okay, so those are your three basic relationships we might talk about. Two other relationships that we talk about a lot are complementary and supplementary angles. Complementary angles are angles whose sum is equal to 90 degrees. So that means when you add up the measure of two angles, they equal 90 degrees. So here I have two complementary angles. One is 40 degrees, one is 50 degrees. 40 plus 50 equals 90 degrees, okay? Another way to think about this is two angles um, make a right angle. So if I were to put these together and make them adjacent such that they shared a side, right, and shared a vertex, together that would make a right angle. So that would make 90 degrees. So I would have the 50 plus 40 together that makes 90. So complementary angles, their sum is 90, and if you were to put them together, they would make, um, if you made them adjacent angles, I should say, they would make a right angle. Down here with supplementary angles, those are angles whose sum is equal to 180. So in this case, we said 122 degrees plus 58 degrees equals 180 degrees. Okay, so supplementary, 180, complementary, 90. And again, we can move these angles around. If I made these two adjacent angles and put them next to each other such that they shared a vertex and a common side, they would make up a linear pair, right? So they would make it so that that bottom line uh, is op or opposite rays and they would add up to be 180. So that's another easy way you can tell from a diagram is basically if the two angles when they're adjacent make up a right angle that means they're complementary, 90 degrees, and if they are put together and they make up a linear pair, that means they're supplementary and their sum is 180 degrees. Okay, and we'll probably have some examples in class where you'll be using some algebra to finish out like the miss you could they would say like oh this angle is 122 degrees and find this is 4x and say that this together they're supplementary so you'd say 4x plus 122 equals 180 and solve for that but we'll do that in class so we don't need to do any examples right now last thing we want to talk about are perpendicular lines so they are intersecting lines that form four right angles so if I look at something like this, it's pretty clear. Let's say we have line AB and CD. They are intersecting lines. AB intersects line CD such that they form four right angles. So the notation for a right angle is just a little box in the corner. I think we talked about that already. 
if you look at this, all four of these make right angles. So if we call this point in the middle, we'll call that point P. So we can say that angle CPB is 90 degrees. APB, APC, I should say, is 90 degrees. APD is 90. DPB is 90. So these are all 90 degree angles. Um, that's nice, easy. We can do some other examples uh, with this. Uh, which I'll show you in a second, but just know that these are 90 degrees and that's a, the definition of perpendicular lines. If you want to use the notation, you would say line AB is perpendicular to line CD and this is the notation for perpendicular to. It looks like an upside down capital T. So it looks like one line meeting the bottom line at a right angle. Okay, so that's how we would distinguish that AB is per, uh, perpendicular to CD. So that's pretty easy to see when we have it just like in a, a diagram like that. But in this case down here, let's say we have it where it's not so clear that it's 90 degrees maybe. So uh, we'll just have to be careful about you know, when the diagrams don't look as easy as the way that we see them up top. So here, again, let's call this D, E, call this F, G, and then we'll call this H, and then we'll call our vertex there, we'll call that X. Okay, so in this case, I could just say, you know, D, E is perpendicular to G, F, and then you would know that all these four angles are 90 degrees, which is nice because then it tells you something about the relationship between GXH and HXE. So if these two lines are perpendicular and every angle in here is 90 degrees, then that tells me that GH or GXH and HXE then must be complementary because those two angles together make up a 90 degree angle. So we can say angle GXH and angle HXE are complementary. And remember complementary means they add up to 90, their sum equals 90, because those are the two adjacent angles that fill out GXE, which we know is a 90 degree angle because these two lines are perpendicular. So with this, we'll do some uh, other algebra problems. So let's say that angle GXH is 3X plus 6 degrees, and we'll say HXE is 9X degrees, and we'll say solve for X or find their angle measure, whatever we want to do. With this case, we know that 3x plus 6 plus 9x equals 90 degrees. We know they're complementary because the two of them together make up that right angle. And that means they add up to 90. So we have 12x plus 6 equals 90. Just combine the x terms there, that's all we did. And so now what we want to do is subtract 6 from each side. And so we'll get 12x equals 84. And now we want to divide both sides by 12 to solve for x. And so x equals 7. Okay, now we can take that, if it asks for the actual angle member, measures, we can plug that back in to solve for the angles. So if this angle HXE is 9X, that equals 9 times 7, so that's 63 degrees. And now let's check 3X plus 6 is 3 times 7 plus 6, so that's 21 plus 6, which is... 27 degrees. And now we want to make sure that the two of them together add up to 90. So 63 plus 27 does equal 90 degrees. So that all checks out. 
So these are some applications we'll have for working with perpendicular lines and uh, just the other different relationships that we have. So when we know something's complementary, we know that the sum adds up to 90. If it was supplementary, it'd be 180. And then we'll also just have to know when we are referring to adjacent or vertical angles, just what exactly that means. So bring these notes with you to class tomorrow. We'll do some work in class as we usually do. And have a great night.